All right, so DC is going after my heart right here. Halloween is my favorite holiday. Batman has to solve a murder during Halloween in Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 of 2. But before I break the trailer down, I'm going to show it to you first. Let's go. I can't really be a lawyer and a criminal, can I? I want to win. But do I want to win like this? I'm of two minds here. So it's a coin flip. Johnny Vitti was murdered tonight. Falcone crime family has to be taken down. There's only room for one homicidal maniac in this town. Why are you running? You could use a little fun. I thought you didn't hurt people! You thought wrong. You still haven't figured out who killed Johnny Vitti? A killer who only works on holidays. There's lots of crazy out there. Once I take him out, things are gonna be different. We can start a family. The city has fallen, Alfred. Then we must endeavor to lift it up again. holiday and who's next this is something i enjoy thoroughly i think we're going to see more batman's detective skills at work here i mean bouncing ideas off commissioner gordon for years has to help those skills and also having billions of dollars at your disposal to acquire the best detective tools out there as well the first voice we hear in the trailer is from district attorney harvey dent he's towered by a mountain of money next to batman when he says I can't really be a lawyer and a criminal, can I? I want to win, but do I want to win like this? I'm of two minds here. And then Batman goes on to say, so it's a coin flip. Now, when I first saw this, I thought of the movie The Dark Knight when Rachel, Harvey, Bruce, and Natasha have a dinner together. Harvey goes on to explain how Batman is needed because criminals must be stopped by any means necessary. Now, eventually, he's just talking a big game because Rachel humbles him later in the scene. And as an audience, we know Harvey is just talking a big game because Harvey Dent operates within the boundaries of the law. And take a look here. Here's that scene at play. L.A. Bruce, this is Harvey Dent. The famous Bruce Wayne. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. So let's put a couple tables together. I'm not sure that they'll let us. Oh, they should. I own the place. How could you want to raise children in a city like this? Well, I, I was raised here. I turned out okay. Is Wayne oh. Manor in the city limits? Is, <laughs> the Palisades? Sure. You know, is there a new DA? You might want to figure out uh, where your jurisdiction is. I'm talking about the kind of city that idolizes a masked vigilante. Gotham City is proud of an ordinary citizen standing up for what's right. Gotham needs heroes like you, elected officials, not a man who thinks he is above exactly. the law. Exactly. Who appointed the Batman? We did it. All of us who stood by and let scum take control of our city. But this is a democracy, Harvey. When their enemies were at the gates, the Romans would suspend democracy and appoint one man to protect the city. And it wasn't considered an honor, it was considered a public service. Harvey, the last man that they appointed to protect the Republic was named Caesar, and he never gave up his power. Okay, fine. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Look. Whoever the Batman is, he doesn't want to do this for the rest of his life. How could he? Batman is looking for someone to take up his mantle. Someone like you, Mr. Dent? Maybe. If I'm up to it. What if Harvey Dent is the Caped Crusader? <laughs> that was incredible acting. And when I get to this scene in The Long Halloween, it makes me suspect Harvey Dent is crooked and Batman may be okay with it so long as they get the criminals off the street, which instantly makes me believe that both of these versions of Batman and Harvey Dent are more morally gray than we normally see them, which should make for an interesting story, to say the least. Obviously, this was a case Harvey and Batman were working on together, and it was a big money laundering case. And the money is obviously meant to represent temptation. Um, Harvey Dent wants to be clean. But does he want to be squeaky clean, I think, is what he's going to be battling with. 
And maybe it's a case of if he brings that money in, everyone else in the department is going to be like, oh, this guy's a Boy Scout. He's, you know, he's super squeaky clean. You know, he'd probably rat me out if he saw me take a dollar. So I think, you know, he's going to be obviously battling with Harvey Dent, but also his darkest side, which is Two-Face. So, Commissioner Gordon tells Batman Johnny Vitti was murdered and that the Falcone family must be taken down. Now, if I'm correct, he's the nephew of Carmine Falcone. As we can see, this murder has everyone on edge. The tension has heightened due to paranoia and everyone's confusion and ultimately their suspicion of one another. And also here we see the Joker having a bit of fun at the expense of other criminals. He says there's only room for one homicidal maniac in this city, which makes me believe that he's not the main antagonist of this movie, for sure. One thing I want to say before I go any further, if you listen to the background music, you hear Joker laughing overlapped with the flipping sound of Harvey Dent's coin. Pay attention. And I think this is more than just a clever ruse. I think the sound of Harvey Dent's coin flipping and Joker's laugh is meant to be like a storm over Gotham City. And here we have Batman chasing Catwoman over buildings and he asks her why is she running and she says you look like you can use a little fun. So I think she's going to be someone who may give him a bit of information and also play with his head while all this is going on. But I, I think more than anything, she may be a character who he may be able to rely on during um, trying to find this murderer in Gotham City. Even this scene right here. He's pushing the gas, changing gears. We're seeing that he's revving up. Symbolically, it means he's pushing himself to the limit. We see that he's pushing this machine further and further to its limits. Is he pushing his morals to the limits as well? And we see here that Harvey Dent seems to be running for district attorney right now. And I believe just like in the Dark Knight movie, he's meant to be the shining hope of Gotham in this movie. Then a quick contrast to Harvey Dent ascending, we see Batman beating up a thug in an alley. And the thug tells Batman, I thought you didn't hurt people. And Batman tells him, you thought wrong. Which now we're seeing Batman's character enter a gray area, which is very crazy for him. And to us as well, for anyone who knows Batman knows he doesn't harm criminals, even the worst of them. And then it quickly goes to Harvey Dent, who we know eventually becomes Two-Face. So there's all this mis mixed messaging, this speculation. There's a whole bunch of just questions that are being thrown at us, and we don't have any answers for it right now. And we see here Bruce Wayne with Alfred trying to solve the murder and trying to basically deduct each criminal and trying to find who likely committed the murder. And we see here a roughed up mobster asks why they haven't figured it out yet. And we see Batman and Commissioner Gordon head to what I believe is Arkham Asylum, and they're trying to get more inside information about how this murderer thinks, um, if, I were, if I were to guess. And I think they're going to a murderer for questions. So I don't know exactly who this mystery man is that they went to meet, but yes, I'm pretty sure he is a criminal who has committed a crime, and they're trying to get his expertise on the case. Now, we don't quite know who this criminal is, but it's safe to say he has an obsession with numbers. And we also see that there's cookies laid out before him. And this guy, I'm pretty sure this guy is a murderer because Batman lays the pictures of the murder to appease him, I'm sure of it. And they're going to ask him what he probably thinks of it. And right here is when I think Commissioner Gordon and Batman begin to call this new killer Holiday. Because this guy says here, a killer who only works on holidays, there's lots of crazy out there. So I think that's why they call him Holiday. And here we have Batman plunging into the sewer, which symbolizes to me he's willing to go deeper and darker to figure out and solve the case of this new murderer. And here we see Solomon Grundy, who's a supernatural supervillain in the DC Universe. So what role he plays in all of this? I don't know, but it makes me think maybe there's a supernatural element along with him. And here we are. It quickly shows us a briefcase with a gun that appears to be wrapped around uh, that, 
the handle was wrapped in duct tape and we have two magazine clips. I don't know if this is our killer's weapon, but with the duct tape around the handle, it looks suspicious enough. Well, as we see the weapon and the music heightens, we quickly shoot over to Harvey Dent, who I believe is trying to convince his fiance, Rachel, um, that he's done with this life. He tells her, once I take him out, things are going to be different. We can start a family so we can hear the voice, his voice inflections. And he's really trying to convince her and drive home that he's done being this guy who's just so driven by trying to get these criminals off the street. And I don't think she's so convinced. And I think this might turn Harvey Dent sour. We see that things may not be as copacetic as he wants them to be at home. And he's convincing her. We know that she's probably heard this before. And I don't think that she's going to be convinced. I don't think she's convinced now. Um, she just probably loved him so much that she's dealt with it. She's dealt with it up to this point. But I think she doesn't want to deal with it any longer. And, um, and there's something to be dissected in what Harvey Dent says. He tells her, once I take him out. I would think that a district attorney would use less aggressive words and maybe say arrest or apprehend not so much take him out like I have to get rid of this guy. Um, but I may be reading too much into that, but I think it is a point of interest. And here we have Batman confronting mobsters who he may believe are responsible for the murders. And I think this is a very pivotal moment in the movie where Bruce Wayne is at a crossroads. Um, the artwork tells it perfectly he's looking outside the window it's dark it's gloomy he's looking at a gnarled twisted black tree and he tells alfred the city is falling alfred and to that alfred replies then we must endeavor to lift it up again and i think that's a really beautiful thing to say because when he says that they're looking over at a picture of uh bruce's mother and father and the pit, there's so much more light in this picture, in this moment, which means that his parents were a sign of hope, not only for him or for Alfred, but the city itself. And he needs to call back to his parents and use, the, use them as inspiration. And so we know that Bruce is going to need that light because we see the city is going crazy right now. And here we see Catwoman dancing on a pile of money. The same pile of money I think Harvey Dent and Batman end up obtaining. So at the end here, Commissioner Gordon asks Batman, who is Holiday? And then Batman replies, and who's next? So basically, they know that this criminal has no alliances. He's not connected to anyone. He's not loyal to anyone. And anyone is on the table. Anyone's a target. And we're just going to have to wait and tune in to Batman The Long Halloween to figure out who this person is. So thank you for listening to me. And I'll be back to talk more about Batman The Long Halloween when it comes out in June. You guys have a good one. Thanks. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the always talented Naya Rivera, who sadly lost her life recently. And my condolences to her family. I know she did a great job in this movie like she did in all of her movies. I just hope her family finds peace and realizes that she was loved and inspired so many.